unsafe, and it's, you know, as far as the harm that's been done to people through tasers in the past, well, the same harm has come to them through physical means without tasers. And the only other uh, defense they have other than physical means is munitions. I would really prefer the other, and I think they would too. So that's why I brought it up in your discussion, and I think you're going to. Actually, uh, my name's Jim Zegner. I'm officer here with the town of Baker Creek. Um, I brought Jimmy Gray, he's a lieutenant with the current police department, and some officers will come with me. Um, I have a little presentation, if y'all wouldn't mind. Can you use the mayor for any examples? <laughs> well, we, we were going to do that, uh, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, um, I brought Lieutenant Greg here. Sorry, he's a personal friend and I get relaxed with him. But I brought Lieutenant Greg here. Uh, Corinth has been deployed, or deployed the Taser since 2005. They uh, had some litigation over them. They've had some personal experiences as a department with them and everything. So if y'all had any questions after this presentation, he is here to answer real world scenarios of what has happened. I will simply um, read off the PowerPoint, the Taser International. I have greatly, um, let's see here, There's supposed to be a, there. Is that mine? No, it's not mine, mean, is it? No, that's Still up from the last one. Y'all notice I said the short version. The original version uh, that I got from Taser International was 326 slides long. Um, I did everybody a favor and we greatly reduced that. If we go forward from here, I mean, this information will be available for you. Taser International puts together huge amounts of data uh, and statistics throughout the world. They collect all this data. Uh, we're talking Belgium, Germany, um, your, all your larger world police departments. I mean, I'm not to mention all the United States police departments that are you know, buying lasers. This is the sole, they used to sell to distributors. Uh, they pulled all that, and now you have to buy directly from them, I think, so they can control a lot of the data that's out there, and they know who is buying their uh, product. Um, up here at the top, I also want to point out, you're going to see CEW a lot during this as an abbreviation. The Taser is a brand name. It is an electronic control device. Okay, so y'all are going to see CDW a lot. Um, Jack Cover um, began research on the Taser in 1969. He was a, a NASA researcher. Um, in 1999, Taser International developed an ergonomically handgun shaped device called Advanced Taser M Series Systems, which uses a patent, uh, patented neuromuscular incapacitation technology. Okay. Um, how the taser works is it fires two small dart-like electrodes which stay connected to the main unit by conductive wires as they are propelled by small compressed nitrogen charges. The air cartridges contain a pair of electrodes and propellant for a single shot and is replaced after each use. There are a number of cartridges designated by range, the maximum is 35 feet. Is that still so? This is correct. Okay. Uh, there, this has changed a little bit in the past year. They have now developed a new one that takes uh, two or three cartridges. There has been some um, design issues with them, with this newest model, and uh, they're promoting the one that shoots two. So this is, uh, this is the most popular, the X series, X26 series, I believe that it's talking about here, and this is what we're interested in. Um, Taser's primary function uh, by creating neuromuscular incapacitation, the devices interrupt the ability of the brain to control muscles in the body. 
This creates an immediate and unavoidable incapacitation that is not based on pain and cannot be overcome. Once the electricity stops flowing, the subject immediately regains control of his or her body. I personally, by this man, have been hooked up to it. And uh, what we call riding it is for five seconds. You take a five second hit. Um, there is, in training, there's three different ways you can do it. You can hook up electrodes by alligator clips to your clothing. Um, you can take a, a shot, which is it's aimed at you, and the two probes are um, shot at you and uh, connect with your skin, and then the dry stomach. Um, I had the electrodes hooked up to my shoulders. I got down on my knees because I'm a big guy. I didn't want to fall and break something. Um, and took a full five second ride on it. And let me tell you, I've been in law enforcement for almost 14 years now. I worked at the jail for a long time. I've been uh, sprayed multiple times that all these guys have too as well. That uh, you get overspray from officers that are in a fight or you know trying to control somebody and they you know they can spray. So there's overspray and everything. So you inadvertently get indirect hits. Um, I've been ever training class. I guess I'm just kind of that guy that you know. Yes, I'll I'll volunteer or whatever um, to take the spray. It's horrible. Uh, pepper spray is the worst. You fill it right there immediately. You wash it off your face. You get home. You take a shower. You fill it again. You know it, it's it's horrible. There's just so much residual. <clears throat> A little bit of nerves um, in 2006 when I did this with him, and but the five seconds it was an incapacitating. As soon as he hit it, I wanted to say stop, and it come out stuff, stuff, stuff. You know, so it, it, it the pulsing and the wattage and the amps that it's set at is does not cause pain. It did not hurt, but when the five seconds were over, I stood up. Joked with all of them. They all patted me on the back. I was like, that was incredible. I could not control a thing when I was on it. When it was going, the electricity was flowing through. Could not, um, I was scooting across the floor. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know how I was. I wasn't telling myself to scoot across the floor. But I couldn't control it. And I wanted, it was just small movements. And uh, But when it was over and done with, it was over. I felt no pain. I didn't feel like I was going to walk around and you know touch somebody and they were going to feel the shock or you know I was going to light up and glow at night when I went to bed. It was done in over. I would I would rather take five seconds from a taser any day than be able to see spray again. That's just when it's when it's over, it's over. What this does is it creates an immediate and unavoidable incapacitation that is not based on pain and cannot be overcome. And once the electricity stops flowing, the subject immediately regains control of his or her body. Taser also provides a safety benefit to police officers. They have a greater deployment range than or empty hand techniques. This allows police to maintain a safe distance. Uh, we'll talk about use of force continuum for a minute. The use of force continuum is what we go by to handle a suspect that is being aggressive. First off, number one, our presence, our uniform. It says, I'm a police officer, I'm here, I see what you're doing, stop. Okay, just our presence says something. Do you think, they're going to think twice if we're not there, oh, should I not be doing this? They see an officer, they think, okay, there's police present. I need to stop. That is a that is a step one on the force. Use of force. Number two is our open hand control. Am I going to put my hands on him? Am I going to use a, a technique to lock his wrist and kind of control his movement? The number three is uh, chemical agents, pepper spray. Um, it used to be. Um, tear gas type stuff, but advances has become pepper spray is the most commonly used. Number four would be the taser. That's where it goes. That's where they believe that the use, the force used in a taser and how it incapacitates them 
where it fits in these supports continually. After that, we're going to go to intermediate weapons or um, where you're grabbing a hold and punching them or hitting them with an asp to um, gain compliance. And then after that, it would be deadly wounds, which would be your sidearm. Does everybody understand that? Why would we consider a taser? It may reduce the use of deadly force, it may reduce injuries to suspects, as well as injuries to officers by suspects, and reduce the litigation by injured suspects. There's less injuries to suspects, the less they're going to follow the suit. <clears throat> taser International was sold approximately 710,000. I believe this was updated in 2011, so this is a little bit old. Um, but uh, Taser International sold approximately 710,000 tasers in 103 countries, more than 16,900 law enforcement, private security, military agencies employ Taser, and more than 255,000 Taser brands have been sold to the general public. Um, this is some usage stats, suspect applications, 1,820,500 and the interesting thing about it is there's almost as much officers that have volunteered for training or whatever to take this. It tells you they're a lot more willing to do this than OC spray. Total number of lives saved as of, uh, this has been updated, February 20th, 2013. Um, 103,324. The safe counter tracks estimates of the number of people whose lives have been saved from potential death or serious injury using taser devices. The last time you deployed a less lethal weapon was, that's a question for you know, us as law enforcement, tasers 58%. I mean, that's more than your baton, your beanbag guns. OC is the closest because it, you know, it's been the longest deployed by departments. <clears throat> um, this is overall data from Taser International. It's uh, per thousand exposures. There was 50 injured and 50, or 500 injured and 500 deaths from a firearm. Baton strike, 780 injuries. Uh, Punch, which uh, we're talking about closed hand control, uh, same as kick, 780 or 450 from kicking. <laughs> NCA basketball has 4% of injuries, and then Taser down there at the very bottom at 2%. It's a very safe, it's proven very safe. 70% fewer officer injuries, 40% fewer suspect injuries. Uh, here, I say this, this kind of gets into the statistics and this gets repetitive, but um, they were so close to us and I mean it's a very large department but the numbers, you know, are quite exploded to what it would be compared to us, but they're close by. Fort Worth PD has 1,500 sworn officers with more than 1,200 tasers on hand with 250 tasers purchased in March of 2012. According to Fort Worth Police figures, Taser X26 CWs were used 1,841 times by officers between 2005 and 2010. And in two thirds of the incidents where someone was arrested, they were used with minorities. This is Fort Worth PD also, just a breakdown uh, by uh, some st racial profiling statistics, I think is that uh, African Americans arrested, after use 824, Anglos 539, Hispanics 398, um, taser use and incidents precipitated by fights, 613, traffic related, 269, alcohol and drug related, 228. Use and incidents participated by mental illness or suicide calls, 152. Violent crimes was 49. Warrant investigations, dog railing incidents, other reasons 513. 321%, 386 of those arrested were taken to the hospital. 209 of those were arrested or admitted to hospital for mental evaluation. Um, 
it show, it, it's Corinth's policy to uh, have them um, evaluated by medical personnel after each deployment, right? Okay. So that, that is a standard to have them evaluated after it's been deployed on a suspect. They remove the barbs if they've not fell out at that time. Also, we, you know, officers do not pull them out or, or remove them themselves and remove our medical personnel. Um, this is this is pretty interesting. Uh, in El Paso, once again, a larger department, but you see the exploded progression of how before they had tasers, you know, they had a high officer assault rate. It started at 520, the next year it was 492. Uh, 506, 378. Then in December of uh, 2003, they had 10 tasers in that department, and it greatly, you know, you already see a fall in the number of officer assaults. In 2005, uh, they had, or 2004, 110, you know, assaults were down to 174. Uh, 2005 was 260. You see the progression. 2007, they had 974 tasers and zero officer assaults. Put that in percentage and it's zero. Uh, this was Mich Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority. I think they've done the largest study since tasers have been developed and deployed in agencies. And uh, this is where taser gets a lot of their information from. 40 plus agencies. 432 taser system deployments, one injury, zero claims. Taser systems reduce excessive force litigation by 54%. If Hickory Creek had two in the last year, half of those will not be even litigated. You know, that's, that's, our, that's our numbers. That relates to us. 123 agencies taking part in taser risk of one program. Um, 5,000 officers, 75 departments supplied with incident reporting requirements. So 60% of the, the 123 asked that followed through with the reporting requirements. 1,768 taser incidents. 1,002 with probe deployments, 560 dry stuns, 132 presentations. Only 74 out of those were ineffective. That's, that's it for the presentation. Um, be glad to ask any questions. I know that if we move forward after this, I will have, uh, I, can, I can provide y'all with as much information or as little as you want. There is a wealth. There is our sister agency next door has eight years of documentation. Um, there has been, since 1999, globally, every, every taser use has been tried to be tracked and uh, statistically shown. So, if y'all have any questions, uh, Jimmy, or Lieutenant Greg and I are here to answer anything. I just want to comment. Thank you, number one, for the presentation. The other thing is thank the officers for showing up. I appreciate their support. I, I've talked to Roger about this on a couple of occasions. I've talked to Sergeant Starnes, and one of the things you know everybody is convinced of is we need to make sure everybody's trained uh, properly or certified or whatever it takes. Uh, a lot of it is, is using your head, common sense, uh, etc., and in reacting in an appropriate manner. And I also understand that Grant puts on an excellent training program. I think is wonderful, but uh, that's one of the big concerns some of the, some of the council may have to make sure everybody is properly trained and certified. And Taser that. International requires that one instructor from each department uh, be certified to come to their training and be, be an instructor. Each department that these are employed at has to have an instructor level certification. That way, that also saves Taser International that they don't have to send trainers out that they trainer, they come to them, we're trained to instruct them. We come back, put on a class for our students, for our officers, and um, maintain the training that way. So he's an instructor. Uh, I'll let him explain how that works. Excuse me. I also understand that uh, there may be uh, a need for 
for at least three uh, units, three tasers for this department. Three? Three, 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 three or four? Four. 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 Okay, four. And the last cost I was understood was somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,500. No, sir. So I was hiring that. That's lower. lower. Uh, each unit, the unit itself is for the X26P was $948 per unit. Now, that's just, that is just for the, the handgun looking device itself. You also have cartridges you have to buy. You also have training cartridges you have to buy. You have also holsters that you need to buy for them because they're going to carry them on their gun belt. Minimal cost. Uh, the, the, I have a price list uh, that uh, if you want to see it, it's here. Um, but um, it's each cartridge you deploy is about 20 bucks a piece. And to, uh, to go through the training, each officer will need to shoot two cartridges per training cycle which is required once a year. And the, the department will have a uh, certified instructor on hand to, to uh, train all the officers. If they can't get that, let me give you a little already agreed to, to assist them to get the, the program off the ground. How much is instructor certification? Instructor certification is about $250 to $300 per class. The instructor has to go and get certified once a year for that to work. So it is a... Uh, you start getting into the little bells and whistles, you can, you can spend a lot of money, but if you say the base model, you're looking at minimal expenditures. So, you have any more specific questions for myself? Appreciate you coming. Appreciate a lot of you tonight. Okay. How many times have y'all used it over in Corinth? Um, I don't have a specific number, but we've had it for eight years, and I would say probably about 20 to 25 times we deployed a case. They have evolved over the years. We had a, a dry sun mode, as Officer Jeffrey said before. Tasers disallowed that. They were recommended if you, you go to a different method. So a lot of ours in the, in the beginning years, they were with the dry sun mode. We've since moved away. We've seen less deployments with the taser itself. But we've also seen less uh, officers and civilians and suspects that have been injured on the streets as well. So they've, they've really been a great product for us. If used, if used correctly, and, uh, and with this point of training in mind, they'll be a great product for as well. Yeah, I think even just having it on your person is a turn for a lot of people. Yes, sir. We see in the past uh, some officers will actually they'll deploy it, they'll, uh, they'll activate it as a red dot on it. <coughs> Bad guy sees that and they discontinue what they're doing. So that, that immediately ends the, the problem right there. We've seen that as well. Do you have any litigation over? Uh, yes, sir, we have. In 2007, we had an officer that used the drive stun mode on a, on a suspect that was fighting with uh, medical personnel. He actually used the drive stun and decided he didn't uh, comply with commands, and the drive stun was used in appropriate me method, but they decided to sue him and that officer was exonerated in, in a federal court. Actually, twice, they did it twice. Well, we've got the lieutenant here. A lot of controversy in the past over uh, the pages. Uh, I have read a lot of material that should a subject have a medical issue, whether they're heart problem, some medical issue, that the taser could could be considered as a contributor to that death. And uh, the reason I say that I'm aware of one estimate for a subject was high on drugs that was paid to his 18 year old He died shortly thereafter. They never did actually prove that the taser was contributed to it. But everything I read from taser and so forth, it could be considered a contributing factor giving other, other mitigating human uh, circumstances involved, uh, whether it be a medical problem, hypertension, blood pressure, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Is that true or is that true? Yes, sir, it is true. There are approximately 20 to 25 medical uh, books that have been written on the face of over the past 12 years. Uh, the, main, the main cause of, the, of death with the face of usage is what, what Chief said, 
his drug usage. The, uh, the offenders are inside a delirium state, I'll refer to that with regard to the racing prior to the deployment. Uh, a lot of this is where we're coming to train, we're telling the officers to, once you taste someone you think it might be an inside delirium, to don't handcuff them right away and don't shove them back to the squad car. These people are basically suffocating in the back seat. So we change our training methods, allow these bad guys to stand up, even allow them to stay in free of handcuffs if we have to, if they're showing signs of this side of the um, They've actually ruled that, like I think, two, two deaths over the 12 years be caused by the patient itself. So, and, but the other cases, they say side of delirium, cocaine usage, heroin, and other drugs that contribute to those deaths. So that's a matter of training. Again, we train like you're supposed to. These, these things can be avoided at all costs if possible. So, and it, it's, it's a weapon, you know, if you use it correctly, it, it could cause certain violence or death. So that's why we really enforce the training and uh, stick to those guidelines. But the texture itself, it does have a uh, kind of a misconception. People here, they see on the front page of uh, someone dying from it. We works off 50,000 volts of electricity. But if anybody knows anything about electricity, bulbs are not, that's not what's dangerous, it's the amperage that kills you. But the amps in the, in the taser are less than one. Actually, a Christmas tree light bulb has more amperage in it than the taser itself. You can get about 25,000 volts by shoving your feet across this car with a dust in the door. So. The other issue that I hear of is when a car is not a hand pump. There are some entries being reported from the fall where maybe they had a corner of a dead, a car bumper, whatever. And I guess the other part of it is in training, shooting the dark, or I guess it's supposed to be press line below. It's due to the dark because if you was to hit somebody in that one of you're going to call serious problems. I mean, I think that would be a gift. And I guess the effectiveness of them depended on the distance they were established now. If it hit the belt or something like that, it's going to deflect it. And which at that point in time, it won't be affected. I guess that's where your second thought would be on what Jim talked about, the belt pack three. Did he inform me of uh, that that's the one that's been discontinued at the time for some electronic issues with the deployment? Yeah. And, the, and the ones with more cartridges, you're getting the more bells and whistles and switches you have to. Think about when you're in the heat of the moment, so they're more difficult to use. The X26 is a simple activating culture that can be. But Chief you are correct, there's many injuries that, that occur from the falls. Uh, try not to use it on pregnant individuals or the infirm, elderly, uh, people that you may that you're gonna know they're gonna fall down and hurt they hit themselves their head on a cabinet or on a desk or whatnot. We don't use them in high angles, so we use them other trees. You can't use the water or rain to save the electricity line up with the child. Correct me if I'm wrong, but pregnant individuals, a lot of the elderly, they really have not done a lot of research or any research before. I've been able to see, especially when somebody was pregnant. Yes, that's, that's correct. They're, they're concerned about the uh, pregnant individuals because of the fall. They're afraid that the fall is going to hurt the fetus. They don't believe that's going to contribute to the feed is itself the electricity is more of a fall that they're concerned about. So we have in our policy that a lot of stuff can be dictated by a good policy that set forth to uh, overcome some of these issues. But remember also too, that person falling by a taser <coughs> is greatly reduced to by an officer going up there and hitting him with an acid talk. You're almost guaranteed an injury with an acid talk. Using a taser is greatly reduced. You know, you're going around from factors that are now in his surroundings and actually being struck by the car. Chief, man, what, what's your opinion on this? I know three or four years ago we talked about tasers, I don't know if you recall. Tasers. And, we, and it was kind of an imbalance of where we wanted to go with it. Of course, we didn't go the direction of purchasing. I just want to count the number. Number one, it's, it's a fantastic tool, and that's all it is for law enforcement. It fits into the force continuum. A lot of discrepancy on who puts where in force continuum. A lot of people believe it belongs directly under use of force. Here it's right above OC. And you got, I guess, hard hands act 
right after it was yeah. done. So there's a lot of controversy on where it's placed in that use of foreign policy. Can it be contributable to a death? My question, or answer is yes. Everything I'm reading is outside of a normal person. A normal person is probably not going to bother. But if you've got medical issues or some other issues that come into play, could it? Yes. There's a lot of... of